won games. There's a very small percentage of coaches in our profession who have won a thousand games. She won the national championship in 2000. She's appeared in the College World Series eight times, which is darn near close to being a record, okay? Uh, last year, and I know you saw, they had a heartbreaking loss in the final championship game, but I'll tell you something. I know there's no consolation for her, but just getting to that game is an amazing feat. Um, she has advanced, now this is amazing, she has advanced to the NCAA in all 18 years that she's been coaching at Oklahoma. She has multiple Big 12 titles, Big 12 Coach of the Year, All-Americans all over the place, uh, national coaching awards, but this December she was inducted into our Hall of Fame, the National Fast Pitch Coaches Hall of Fame. Let's just give her a big hand for that. tell you that she's a great mom, has a great family, and knows how to put things in perspective, and you're going to hear about that now. Patty Gasson. Thank you, Ralph. I just want you to hurry up with all that stuff and break it into my time. So get off the stage. I'm to get um, it's a pleasure to be here. I, I love coming out here because I don't get to spend much time out in this part of the country and I love it because you guys are always so excited and want to so much knowledge. You ask questions and you absorb and I love that. There have been other places I've gone to where everybody already knows what you're saying or at least they think they do. So you just kind of whatever. But what I'm doing today, no PowerPoints, no nothing. This is just really me more a pep talk to you as coaches as you get started, whether it's in your high school season or your travel ball season. It's some stuff that's going to make you laugh. It's some stuff that's going to wake you up. It's some, you know, I'm hoping that you're going to walk away with some ideas. But um, I really, really want you to understand what the word coach means. To be called Coach Gasso, to me, is an absolute honor. It's an honor. It's an honor. Because I understand that I am more than a coach. If you look back at your careers, you guys, and if you played sports and you look back and you go, someone asks you, who was the most inspirational people in your life? You'll say your parents, and usually, if you're an athlete, you talk about a coach. Someone who inspired you one way or the other. That's who we are. And we forget about that. We get caught up in winning and losing. Now, Ralph said, oh, you know, I, we got to the national championship game. If you know me, yes, we did. But it still burns me that we don't hold the trophy. Absolutely. It burns me. But I understand. I'm in a right it took me a while, but I figured out that I am more than just a coach that wants to win. I am a mentor, I am a parent, I am a teacher, I am a coach, I am a groundskeeper, I am a psychologist, I am so many things to these kids, and that's who you are. Be ready for this responsibility, because it is a major responsibility, just like parenting. These are your kids. They're not just your players. Now, if that's too much on you guys, then think twice about it because these guys need you. We are, this is a huge responsibility for us. Let's talk a minute about parents, because a lot of you might be parents. I am a parent. I have two sons, a 24-year-old who is my graduate assistant, and we can talk how that works later, but <laughs> not right now. Um, and I have a senior son in high school. And um, as a parent, who grew up as a coach, I think I'm pretty realistic about my kids and their skills. And my oldest son went to a small college to play baseball. And we never led him to believe that he was a player that should be playing baseball at the University of Oklahoma because he wasn't good enough, bottom line. <coughs> you guys know what you're dealing with out there. And parents think that their kids, the greatest kids that ever played softball. How do you change that? I don't know that you do. Um, but 
but our job to, if there's helicopter parents around your kids, right, following every move they make, wanting to know everything, it is our job to hold these kids accountable. And to me, that's one of the things that is lacking in today's world and today's parenting. As a parent, I want to give my kid everything they can. And if you lose your bat, Cindy, I've got another one for you. Don't worry. You lost your cell phone, you lose mine. You know, what? Are you kidding? Your kid's 11 years old. What's going on? Teach them about responsibility. That stuff doesn't happen. Because if I do something, my parents will bail me out. My parents are going to help me. They'll get me out of trouble. They'll buy me another one. They'll take care of the situation. That's how it works. I am dealing with this. As kids leave you and come to me, I am dealing with a lot of things, as you'll hear me talk about. Um, today's society of kids, to me, is very, very Vanilla, vanilla as in weak, as in soft. Um, kids come into our program and I will tell you that they right now suffer from confidence, lack of confidence. They are afraid to fail. They have these expectations of, oh, I'm coming to OU and I, have to, and I don't know that I'm good enough and I don't know that... Where is that stuff coming from? It's coming from other kids. And the dad, that is Mr. Win at all costs, and the kid's 10 years old, and he's screaming and yelling at her when she gets home. Those are the kids that might grow up to be pretty good players, but they are absolutely broken with their spirit when they get to me. So I really, um, I, I, I will tell you, with, if you guys are coaching young kids, Eight, nine, six, seven, eight, nine, however old they are. That time is for learning and for skill work and for training and for fundamentals. When you play, do you want to win? Sure. If you don't, it's okay. Yes, I am saying that to you. It is okay because when they're kids, they need to learn. They need to learn how to play the game. I watch a slow a, a, a t-ball. No, I almost said slow pitch. No, I do not watch slow pitch. <laughs> they still play slow pitch in Oklahoma. Believe it. The slow pitch season in high school is starting right now. It's ridiculous. Okay, we well, good. Keep me on track. Keep me on track. Right. So t-ball, hit the ball to the pitcher, right? And the coach says, run over to first and tag it. Don't throw it. Don't throw it. Don't throw it. Don't throw it. Really? Come on. Seriously. Your job with young kids is to teach. Be great teachers. Get them to understand what you're teaching. Train them. Teach them. Do chalk talks. Get them to learn the game. I can't tell you how many players I have that show up and man, they are phenomenal athletes that don't know how to play the game. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. Tell me where to run. Tell me when to run. I need these guys independent. There's nothing that irks me more when I'm out recruiting and I watch it, say it, just a pitcher. Pitcher throws a pitch, looks in the dugout for affirmation, looks for acceptance from the coach. Oh, good pitch, yeah, good pitch. Or, oh, you know, all, <laughs> all that stuff. I need athletes that know how to stand on their own. If you stand on your own and you're confident, that means it's kind of like studying for a test. You're ready for it, right? You are the teachers that teach them and train them to take the test. When they're out on the field, let them take the test. You step away and let them play. You did your job in practice, and they'll be ready. Now, does that mean no teaching in games? No, still means teach. As they get older, you let go of the reins a little bit because you sh they should know. When they're young, you still need to get out there. But man, I'll tell you, the interference from parents um, is tough. And I will tell you something that you might relate to. Some of you can do this yourselves, and some of you right now probably can't. At the University of Oklahoma, the expectation is to win a national championship. That is my expectation. Is that my administrators? They would like it. They would like us to do well. 
Um, so about three years ago, I had a really tough time in coaching. I wasn't very enjoying much of what I was doing. I'm just being honest. You'll get there sometimes. And I just didn't really care for the style of my team, and I knew that I had to make a change. Were we good? We were okay. Good enough to get to the World Series? Probably not. But I didn't know why, because I thought I had pretty good athletes, and I just really evaluated our program, and I figured it out. I called six players. Five of them were starters. Season was over. I called six players, one at a time, in my office. And I thought to myself, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to talk them into not coming back. Because I chose these six because I thought they didn't have the passion or the priority that I wanted for an elite athlete in my program. So I called them in one at a time. And it sounded something like this. OK, Javen, um, look. You know, think about what it would be like not to have to wake up in the morning and be at workouts at 6 a.m. Wouldn't it be nice to sleep in? And then think about, like, in the day, you could go out to lunch with your friends, and then at night, you might even want to get a job and just live as a normal student at the University of Oklahoma. Uh, your body won't hurt anymore. You know, you won't have to be sitting in ice baths. Think about Oh my gosh, it's just a breath of fresh air. I mean, doesn't it kind of sound good, right? I'm trying to talk them into it. Okay, so here were the answers I got back. Yeah, it kind of does sound good. Can I get back to you, coach? Can I take some time to talk to my parents? Did, did I just get my answer, right? Okay, one kid, I said that too, and she burst out crying. I said, how could you think I wouldn't want to play here? Get your answer? Right, got my answer. Six kids, five took me up on my offer. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. Wow, what a great idea. Wow, smart. You're so smart. Okay. All right, so now I'm down to 12 athletes. We got a quick walk on and had 13. My team came back from the summer and saw this. They knew what kind of happened over the summer. They came back. Without saying it, this team was saying, thank you so much, coach. You just got rid of the dead weight. Now we can move forward together. Whether it's 9, 12, or 18, thank you very much. We're good. We got your back. We got you. No worries. And that's how I took them. Practices were awesome. Effort, outstanding. Commitment, 100%. You know what it feels like to throw pitches, throw batting practice to a kid that doesn't want to be there? When in your mind, you're going, what am I doing? I know, she's just going through the motions. But as long as you keep doing it, you're not going to change the outcome. These are elite athletes who have other things on their mind, and softball isn't it. Now, can you do that? Some of you can. Some of you work with young kids. Some of you can. Some of you can't. But let me tell you what happened after that, OK? My team is playing pretty well with such a small group. We were short in some areas, but their heart wanted it more than anything. And sometimes that makes up for it. So we get to the end of the season, and my captain and one of my 